I was laid on the other one so bear with me slash k slash omrads. Be me, 18 year old social fuck up. Managed to have a few friends. They invite me to a lodge for Christmas holiday, me and my family don't usually celebrate anything, we just sit in different rooms and do our stuff. I'm super excited cause a friend of mine is coming and also girls, I'm pathetic, I know. I take my misinigant cause the guy that has the lodge said it's like 5 kilometers from any form of civilization and I wanted to go and play with my fun Z. Pack clothes and the general necessities. Get to the train station. I'm by myself. Nice and on you are a faggot, getting here early. A few minutes pass and I start seeing the gang coming. Please entries exchange.exe. It's basically me, my friend, light interest in slash k slash stuff but still better than nothing, lodge bro, his girlfriend, his cousin, and three other chicks from our school I only knew from sight and just assumed that they are Stacy tier. Lodge bro's cousin though was a bit too slash k slash if you'd ask me, the dude had these leather boots, they had wear on them but oddly very well maintained and pristine, almost shinning, some OD trousers an OD trench coat that looked dope as fuck. He also had this cool rock with a OD painted German helmet. Nazi Polak detected. He doesn't talk too much, his face is covered by some cloth and a wool cap. We get in the train and we start to get to know each other. Lodge bro said his dad left some fun Z at the lodge but doesn't know exactly what he has, his girlfriend is super nice, a bit liberal but not to the Calicancer America has. One of the girls, let's call her Anna, has a major boner for fun Z in World War II history. Another chick, Stacy because she was one, just seemed to me like a liberal feminist with daddy issues. The last chick though, let's call her Gabby cause it's short, was more of a bookworm. She didn't have deep knowledge but knew the bulk of most subjects. So Gabby and my friend get along pretty well since he is a bookworm too, mostly Marx, philosophers, manga and occasionally some Sven Hassel if I lend him a book. I keep to Anna since she likes fun Z and we discuss Cold War era weapons. Slash K slash dude just sits there, he decides to remove his face cloth and get off his hat revealing some pretty Aryan features like blue eyes and a nice clean and shaved face. He doesn't talk and completely ignores the conversation, he just looks outside the window. Ticket control comes in, pretty old chill dude, asks me what I have in my weird bag, pelican case. I explain that I have a rifle, he asks me if I have permit and all the papers, I show him and he starts ranting about the times back in communism when he had wagons full of soldiers deploying for training, all of them having AKs and such, he told us how most were just chill guys but there were a few retard ones too. Ticket control leaves, and we keep talking about various stuff, trying to avoid the trigger subjects. After 3 hours we finally arrive, it's around early morning and it's snowing pretty light, the scenery is fucking beautiful, woods, fields and all sorts of landscapes. Lodge bro says we have to pass through a village and hike through the woods until we get there, but luckily there's a nice trail. The villagers are preparing for Christmas too but one halts for the slash k slash dude and talks a bit with him. Guys go on, I'll catch you in a minute. He finally speaks as he walks away with the villager. We slowly walk and we joke about how he might get kidnapped or fucked in the ass by the villager when we see him catching up with us. He has a shit eating grin on his face as he catches up with us. What did you do sly devil? Lodge bro asks. Slash K slash just shows him a bottle of Rakia. The villager gave it to me and told me to keep up the good work. He gave it for free? He wanted to, but I'm not that Jewish and I gave him some money. So all is dandy and fine except the Eastern European cold weather that is biting our asses. We enjoy the scenery, the fields looking oddly beautiful as they are covered in snow. The village looks like it was taken out of a fairy tale. All is nice until we start getting deep in the woods. I get the hibby jibbies and the dilly dallies as we go deeper into the woods. Slash K slash dude looks at me with a frown but slowly nods, he must have the same feelings. Lodge bro and his girlfriend are probably used to it cause they don't seem bothered. My friend and Gabby seem too preoccupied with discussing slash lit slash stuff. Stacy walks behind Lodge bro and his girlfriend being the third wheel or some shit. Anna gets closer to me as we walk, Ah yes. At one point she speaks up. Yo fellas, am I the only one weirded out by this forest or some shit? We take a break to rest and Lodge Bro tries to reassure us. It's okay guys, the woods give this feel, me and my girlfriend felt the same a couple of times but you get used to it. Yeah man, but I feel watched. Anna replies. Now that you mention it, this forest does feel a bit odd. Gabby adds. Well you guys do know the legends. Right? Slash K slash dude bursts in laughter. This voodoo shit again cuss. What a voodoo shit. My friend gets interested, 
the slash x slash and him getting to the surface. Laja bro over here is gonna feed you some Wendigo or Scanwalker bullshit he saw on the internet. But what if it's true? Laja bro tries to test the waters to see how chicken we are. Fuck off comrade, this is Eastern Europe. The worst we can bump into is some bear that forgot what hibernation means or some bush wookie jacking off. Slash K slash continued. Aren't you a pile of shit ruining my spooky stories? Make them realistic at least, invent some shit about an asylum or something, not this fairy tale shit. We get back on tracks, a bit more relaxed but still I get the feeling that I'm watched. The trail ends JPEG. We got to go off road guys. Lodge bro says as he starts hiking through frozen foliage. We keep walking until he says something that weirds me out. Yo, cover your noses for a bit cause there is this part where it fucking stinks of dead animals. What? I ask. I don't know what this shit is caused by, but every time I come here there is this smell that seems to come from dead animals. Slash K slash dude looks unimpressed. I thought it might be another fairy tale like slash K slash said but after a few more meters I get hit by this horrible stench that makes me gag a few times. Everyone is complaining about it and we just try to rush through that zone. Shouldn't we check? Slash K slash asks. Check what? The source of the smell. Be my guest, if you want to satisfy your morbid curiosity, I don't find any point in looking for a decaying carcass. It's snowing here. We shouldn't feel the smell of decay. Man, that's bullshit. Be it as you say. For the rest of the road I chit chat with Anna but I throw some glances at slash K slash. Jimmy's are Russell.exe. He seems paranoid. Constantly looking around but I shrug it off. We finally arrive at the lodge, nothing impressing, it has two levels, bottom one is common room, upper one has two dormitories and a bathroom. Boys establish HQ in one of the room and the girls in the other. I get settled and go back downstairs to chill in front of pick related. Feels cozy as fuck. Girls come down, lodge bro too. Yo homie, let's get ready to party real hard my dudes. Lodge bro says as he starts giving orders. Girls. Prepare some appetizers while me and Anon go out to prepare the barbecue and get some firewood. Slash K slash dude and my friend finally come down. My friend carrying some alcohol bottles and the slash K slash dude was carrying my friend's PS2. I giggled as I saw the look of pure disappointment in slash K slash S eyes and posture as he carried the console to the Stone Age TV we had. Yo slash K slash I say come give us a help outside. Salvation.jpg he puts the console down and rushed outside with us to help us. A few minutes pass and my edgelord friend comes too. We talk slash k slash stuff and I found out about Lodge Bros cousin, Max for now, that he was pretty hardcore survival dude and liked guns and hunting. Not bad. Not bad at all. Fast forward till night when Lodge Bro and his girlfriend occupy our room, the girls are too tired and go to bed and it's me, Max and my buddy downstairs making amends that we will sleep downstairs. Me and my friend are playing on the PS2 and Max is looking at a SKS and Michael he found in a closet. All fun and games till Lodge Bro comes down pretty pissed. Guys can you please knock it off? You want mate? It was fun and silly the first two times but now is annoying. What you fucking porch monkey? Tapping in the fucking window. It's on the second level mate. We ain't magicians. It wasn't us. Slash K slash dude says. Then who? Krampus? Lodge bro's girlfriend comes down pale as fuck looking at us. I heard it again. Confusion.exe. The tapping? Yeah. Max looks at me. Get your mitts in. As he gets up to go find ammo for the SKS I get in the room and chills run down my spine. Shit feels odd. Not spooky odd. It's beyond spooky. Kinda of felt like I knew something is watching but I couldn't see jack shit outside the window. Not that I mustered the courage to go and look. I take my missin and go down to meet Max and Lodge Bro armed with the SKS and Michael. My friend is on the couch near the fireplace from pick related above with an axe in his hand and Lodge Bro's girlfriend next to him. Max goes full officer and instructs Lodge Bro to go upstairs and check on the girls. Me and him get outside. Dear God it's cold. Like fuck me in the ass motherland cold. We walk around the perimeter of the house but nothing. We get to where the girls had their window. Something isn't right. We wave flashlights around until Max urges me to kill the light and points me at some trees in the distance over the fence. Look. I don't see anything. Something is there. How do you know? Shine your light. I shine my light and indeed I saw it. One of the shadows did a go well with the rest of the landscape. Bricks.exe. I only caught a glimpse of what seemed to be a black salute before it darted into the woods. Max just darted after the enemy jumping the fence like it was the Polish border in 1939. I try to keep up but Max is in better shape than I am. Good 10 meters between us. 20 meters. 30 meters. 40 meters. 
50 meters. Fuck.exe. I'm alone. I can't see Max's flashlight. I can't hear Max. Flashlight decides to play Morse code with me. Don't die on me battery. Darkness.jpg. Judge me if you want. But I was scared. Fear enveloped me. Fear became despair. I felt danger all around me. Max. Come back. Max. Fear got the better of me and I cowered, leaving Max in the darkness of the woods. I cowered like a fucker back to the lodge. Fastest I ever ran in my life. As soon as I got over the fence and into relative open area I felt relieved but I still felt watched. Lodge bro came out of the lodge with his bicycle. You got the fucker. Where's Max? I, I. Words are on. I lost Max man. He went after that guy. How do you lose a person you idiot? Battery died. I'm sorry. You're a moron. He goes to the fence and wants to leap it but decides for some reason not to. He comes back, not turning his back from the woods. Terry something there that ain't Max. We both take aim but a bit to the right we see a light. It's Max running and jumping over the fence. He looks frustrated and tired. Motherfucker. He utters. Fucking lost him. Lajabro is in denial stage for some reasons. I didn't find tracks. It's like he vanished. Go back inside to rustle chicks and my friend. We explain the situation. Maybe you guys scared him or them off? Anna tries to be more optimistic. Let's go back to sleep. Or at least try to. We all agree but I give her mine again just in case. Lodge bro and my friend sleep in the room. Max asked me to stay down with him. I'm ashamed and I can't look him in the eyes. Anon I know you ran. I'm sorry Max. It's okay. I don't mind. It probably was the better thing to do anyway. Look at me. An ice cold glare meets mine. I don't know who is out there. But they know their shit. I couldn't find tracks, no sign of anything, it's like he vanished. It's creepy man. Never in my life have I seen such a thing. I don't understand what is happening, but you must have noticed that the woods are absolute silent. What? It is winter, that I understand, it's minus god knows how much, but not a sound, no wood snapping, no deer, no nothing. Fear Perseus Mandate.exe that's weird. We haven't heard or seen an animal yet even to this moment we are not alone. And that was the conversation. I was terrified to even ask more. He just sat there, gun aimed at the windows and door. From time to time he got up and walked to the kitchen and he just listened as he was enveloped in darkness. I passed out at some point but when I got up, people were chatting around and eating. Max wasn't around them. Where's Max? He went outside to walk. He has to come back. It's been 30 minutes. I get up and grab some bread and a dried sausage and go to check for him. Anna decides to tag along. Man this is the creepiest Christmas I ever had. I feel you Anna. I'm kinda worried. Quite terrified if I may say. Some fucker playing tricks on us. I lie to her. After my conversation with Max I didn't felt like it was human. Let's hope you guys scared him away so that we can enjoy the rest of our time here. She grabs my hand, cliche, I know, but it happened so deal with it. So we just walk around holding hands through the woods. Sounds retarded. Is retarded. I was thinking with my dick at that time. I see Max in what seemed to be an opening that led to the forest being quite rare, large spacing between trees, but still enough density to give you a hard time maneuvering. Hi guys. Hi Max, we were looking for you. Does it look like it? He points at me holding hands with Anna. Shame.exe. You guys are the only thing that made a sound besides me so far. Even now that it's day? Yeah. Explain this to me guys. I read pill Anna. She slowly nods but her facial expression betrays fear. I'd like to return to the lodge now. Understandable. Max says and we start a silent march back to the lodge where we just have lunch and we try to unwind. I try to stick with Anna and just detach from this creepy thing but Max's posture just urges me to get more tense and worried. Fast forward to night time. It's me and Max's turn to sleep in the room, Lodge bro and my friend are guard duty. Sweet sleep cycle. Not. Get yanked hard for my sweet sleep by my buddy. Yo guys wake up. Seats weird man. Max starts out of sleep and we get back downstairs and he leads us outside where Lodge bro is aiming his bicycle. What happened? Just listen man. We sit there for like a minute or two and hear it. Max. Come back. But it's not human like. It's like it was growled or the thing saying it gagged on the words themselves but it sounded like me. What the actual fuck, I say. Max is confused too. I don't understand this. The thing that creeped me the most is when I heard the voice from the woods where me and Max started for the intruder. Max. Now from where Lodge bro pointed his bicycle, though this one was distant. Come back. Blitzkrieg.exe in the lodge. The girls heard it too and they are scared shitless, not that I wasn't. 
We block the second level's windows with furniture and do the same with first level too. Tomorrow we leave, Laja Bro decides. Maybe we can fight it? Max proposes. He would rather not get close to that thing. My friend says. As we all moved HQ downstairs we hear something that froze our blood. Tap. 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 Regulated intervals on the closest window to the door. Tap. 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 Leave us alone. Stacy yells. Alone. We hear the cacophony of what tried to resemble Stacy's words. Max. Alone. Max. Alone. Come back. Mates, you don't even realize, the sound, a cacophony that tried to regurgitate letters to form words and sounds only sounding like something outworldish. Help. We hear outside. Max. A thud on the door. The girls are crying. We are scared shitless. Come back. Dear Lord, Holy Son, and Spirit. Thud and screeching intensifies. Orthodox prayer intensifies. Then silence. Deafening silence. Max is the first to grow a pair, grab the SKS and walk to the door. I get up and want to go with him but something nails me in place. Fear, paranoia and that feeling you get that if you leave the protection of your cover you will die. Max looks at me, looks at the rest. Prayers won't help you friends. He walks out, closing the door. Silence again. Might have heard Max's footsteps but I'm not sure. I hear shots being fired then what I could say it was a blood-curdling scream, not human though. Max comes back in, paler and older than he had left. He looks at us, for the first time I could see fear in his eyes. But he hit it well. We leave tomorrow. Fast forward till morning. Rearrange the furniture back and we inspect the door. It was bent, but it held. Along the lodge we saw scratches. We wanted to book it but nah. A blizzard had to pass. So here we are in the main room not being able to see shit outside cause of the wind and snow. Sit in the main room and wait. Five minutes and a granola bar later. Nothing. I go to the upstairs toilet to get rid of my unwanted surplus of bodily fluids. Elevator music.exe. Get out of bathroom. Um. I look in my former room. Nothing. I look at the girl's former room. Catch glimpse of dark looking claw getting away from the window. Dotavi. Slowly close door. Turn and close my former room door. Slav superstar down the stairs.exe. They are here I mutter. General mobilization.exe. The cacophony show starts again. Thuds and scratches. Louder. 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 It's a pain to even listen. I feel hope draining out of my body with each thud and each comeback cacophony. Max gets up. Enough. He looks at us. I refuse to stay here and die like cattle. He is in full battle rattle, and marches to the door. I sack up to grab my missin and follow him. Max probably snapped, but fuck me in the ass he was right. As soon as he grabs the door handle everything stops, he gets out aiming his SKS in the blizzard. Come in fight me hell spawn. He yells, going into the blizzard. He starts firing. Fuck it. Aim at blizzard and see a shadow dashing. Fire. Miss. Fire. Miss. Fire. Hit. The creature screams but darts away. Max comes to my aid. Laja bro balled up and came out and threw what I can only imagine was a Molotov. I can hear screams from the creatures, I press um, that sounded angry and frustrated but silence came back. The blizzard was finished by 1pm and we booked it. Marched hastily to the trail. I was the last because I had a gun. I'm still confused of what I saw. Two human-like silhouettes, they looked grey slash black but no other thing that I could see at that distance. They weren't concealing themselves anymore. I found it weird, but I hoped to the gods they gave up. And thankfully they did. We didn't stop until we got into the station and we slept there over the night until a train arrived. But even in the station, I kept my anagant in close reach because I still felt in danger and watched from somewhere. I haven't gone to that place since, I don't think I'll ever go again. Laja bro moved out of county with his girlfriend. Don't care about Stacy. I dated Anna until she left for the states, probably somewhere in Minnesota or Wyoming but I'm not sure. My friend went to Japan. I hanged out with Max for a while but then we drifted apart. He hanged himself for reasons that are unknown to me. Lajabro said it was depression. The deep woods are a dangerous place my friends.